Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video, we'll be talking about what is episome. So in simple term, episome are genetic materials. I mean, it, it is consisting of a DNA a molecule, nucleic acid structure, which is found separately than the original genetic content of an organism. And it is self replicatory. So a genetic material that is not solely, I mean, it's a nucleic acid that is found separately from the core genetic material of an organi organism genome. And it is self replicatory and it may interact with the genome of that organism or it may embedded into the genome of that organism. So what does that mean? So let's talk about here. Episome can be found in both cases like in bacteria that is the prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes. So in prokaryotes uh, the simple example of an episome is plasmid. So now you know what is episome because plasmids are much familiar name to us. So what we have here is we have our cells bacterial cells for example in the cells we are having the genetic material inside let's say this this red thing is a genetic material this is the genetic material because bacteria don't have all those nucleus and all these things uh, this is the genetic materials and beside that we have uh, some amount of a circular usually circular DNA that is called as episome usually circular DNA because they are not kind of linear in most of the cases, they are found circular. So these are episome and the example is here plasmid. Now they are uh, present as an extra entity as you can see here. They can replicate on their own so they can produce, so they can replicate on their own. Another important thing is that they can insert themselves into the genetic material of that organism in this case inside the bacterial genome so we can see certain things like that we can see uh, let's say the genetic material inside like this and somewhere there in the middle uh, that plasmid may have inserted itself right so how would they uh, initiate the replication of themselves because they can recruit certain proteins, they can take the proteins, uh, the accessory proteins, I mean the necessary proteins for the DNA replication from the bacterial cell, the host cell. They are not kind of parasite but they present sometimes they are very important for the bacteria itself because usually they are very much important for the organisms like bacteria and viruses because they will provide them an extra edge for certain things. For example, in bacteria that plasmid or episomes may contain uh, the gene for antibiotic resistance. So in that case it will help the bacteria to resist against certain type of antibiotics and it's a curse for us though. And it is a good thing for us because we can purify those plasmids and we can use them in a broad range of molecular biology techniques. So that's the important thing. Now if you look at here the same thing for the eukaryotic system, eukaryotic cells and usually in eukaryotic cell we can see the presence of plasmids or presence of episomes actually from viruses because in eukaryotes we don't have a presence of extra chromosomal uh, materials, extra chromosomal uh, inheritance pattern like these plasmids because uh, we don't have, we don't need that because we have complicated structures, uh, we have the DNA wrapped around histone and in the, in, in chromosome. So here in eukaryotes we also have episomes, the episomes in eukaryotes, the episomes in eukaryotes are from viruses, remember that, they are from viruses, example of such is herpes simplex virus for example. In that case if the herpes simplex virus attacks a particular eukaryotic cell, let's say this is the eukaryotic cell and the virus attacked this eukaryotic cell let's say this is, let's draw it, say this is the herpes simplex virus, it attacked the cell and it has all this material inside, the circular material or sometimes linear because viruses may have linear DNA content and in that case it will inject its nuclear material inside uh, the cell. So because inside the nucleus what we have here, inside the nucleus we have, we are having those new chromosomes and all the materials but after the injection of that, I mean uh, of this uh, nuclear material from virus and virus have an elegant system of this delivery because they can actually bring this nucleotide material, we bring their nucleic acid material inside the nucleus. That's a very important strategy because they just, just they don't just drop it in the cytosol of eukaryotic cell because they know for the proper functionality of that 
nucleic acid it should reach the destination called nucleus and they will bring it inside the nucleus so once they bring it inside the nucleus we find that thing present here inside the nucleus as a separate thing now that most of the time they remains as a separate entity and uses the host cell machinery they hijack the host cell machinery to grow and replicate itself and produce uh, those protein molecules that are helping to produce the, the outer coat or the capsid and the envelope of that virus so that the virus particle is mature, they are they're composed, they are packaged and they are delivered outside of the body. That is the condition. Sometimes what happens they can also integrate themselves inside the genome of our eukaryotic system that may also result. Usually in eukaryotic system the replication of this virus uh, nucleic acid is based on the rolling circle replication. So, they follow the rolling circle mode of replication here, right. So, that is kind of in a sense of what is episome and I think I help you to understand what is episome. So, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button here in both this way here and here also. Uh, you can like this video, hit a like or put some comments and share it with your social network profiles. I'll be very glad to see that. Thank you very much. All the best.